It's no secret, although it is a tough topic to broach, obesity, it is on the rise. Obesity rates are increasing not just in adults, but in young children as well. I'm a dermatologist, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about how obesity negatively impacts your skin specifically. As a reminder, your skin, your skin is a window to what is going on internally. Problems on the skin surface can be a red flag for internal disease, whether it be skin tags, dark patches, breakdown of the skin barrier, delayed wound healing. Obesity affects the skin in many ways that people don't even realize. In today's video, not only am I going to walk you through the many ways in which obesity can impact your skin, we're going to be touching on what to look for, what causes it, and how to take care of your skin if you are affected by obesity. First of all, let's get into the nitty gritty about why obesity affects the skin. Obesity is not just about having excess body fat. It's a systemic condition that causes low-grade chronic inflammation throughout the entire body, including your skin. When you combine that increased inflammation with the chronic mechanical stress of skin rubbing together, it can trigger a whole host of skin problems. Skin problem number one that a lot of people ask me about is skin tags. The medical name for skin tags is acrocordons. Now to be clear, skin tags are really, really common and not all skin tags are related to obesity. Skin tags are small, soft, flesh colored growths that usually appear where you have skin on skin contact in the skin folds, but they also commonly affect the skin of your neck. They pop up under the arms, under the breasts, the abdominal folds, in between the thighs, but they they're really common in people with obesity because a lot of what brings them out is thought actually to be chronic friction, rubbing together of the skin. And a way to help prevent skin tags from popping up is to take measures to reduce friction in these areas. But there is another factor that we can't ignore when it comes to having obesity, insulin resistance. Higher insulin levels can stimulate growth of skin cells, which might actually be a contributing factor in the development of skin tags. The good news about skin tags, they are harmless and there are a variety of ways that they can be removed. Check out some of my videos going over that exact topic on how to get rid of skin tags once and for all. And no, don't try and take them off yourself. Skin problem number two is something called inner trigo. Inner trigo is the medical term for inflammation, skin rashes in the skin folds, like under the arms, under the breast, in the abdominal folds, in between the thighs, in the groin area, in between the buttocks. When the skin folds are trapping sweat and heat, that moisture trap between skin on skin contact creates the perfect storm for inflammation, skin barrier breakdown, and even sets the stage for the colonization of different microbes and subsequent skin infections. For example, yeast infections of the skin are not uncommon in the skin folds, in the areas of intertrigo, in people with obesity. You can also get certain bacterial skin infections in these areas as well. This can be very painful, very uncomfortable, and can even lead to a foul odor in some cases. When it comes to inner trigo, prevention is key. Take measures to keep the skin folds dry and lubricated. Use barrier creams. I'm a big fan of something called Monistat Chafing Powder Relief Gel. It's a great skin protectant for the skin folds because it doesn't feel super greasy or occlusive on the skin and allows for good evaporation of sweat so that you don't trap sweat in these areas and that again, further breaks down the barrier even more. Check out my video all about how to get rid of these rashes under the breasts. I give a lot of practical tips and tricks in that video for how to tackle intertrigo. Skin problem number three, acanthosis nigricans. Let me know in the comments if you have ever heard of this. I actually have several videos on the skin condition. It's so common and so many people struggle with it. Here's the thing, acanthosis nigricans, it looks like this dark, thick, velvety, hyperpigmentation. It really can happen on any body site, but it commonly affects like the sides of the face, the backs of the hands, the back of the neck for sure, under the arms, in the skin folds, and like skin tags, a big driver for acanthosis nigricans is insulin resistance. 
insulin like growth factor drives the keratinocytes in the cells to proliferate and lead to this thickening of the skin. It's actually one of the first signs of insulin resistance. This is essentially a metabolic imbalance that is quite common in people with obesity and prediabetes. And while the patches of acanthosis nigricans themselves are not dangerous, they do provide a warning sign for insulin resistance, which absolutely, absolutely must be addressed because the consequences of not doing so are dire. Check out my video all about how insulin resistance affects your skin and of course that being a telltale sign of underlying health issues. Treating the underlying insulin resistance through lifestyle factors and medications if necessary is key. Here's a way obesity affects your skin that's going to surprise you and that is dry cracked feet. Dry cracked heels are especially common in people who have obesity. Excess weight puts more pressure on the bottoms of your feet, on your soles, on your heels. This can cause the skin to thicken as a result and crack and to become very dry. These dry cracked fissures can also become very painful and because they represent an area where the skin is vulnerable and impaired, they become very favorable for the colonization by fungus like athlete's foot. Check out my video on dry cracked heels because I give a lot of tips and tricks on how to heal them up, but I'm a big fan of carousel foot ointment. It has urea and salicylic acid keratolytics that get in there and dissolve all that dry rough stuff, help hydrate the skin, and it also provides some lubrication as well. You only have to spend 30 seconds on skincare TikTok to hear the words skin barrier or skin barrier impairment, how to repair the skin barrier. Those are really buzzy catchphrases, but they're not just trending search terms terms, they really are issues and they especially impact people who have obesity. Basically, obesity can impair your skin's ability to protect you from the outside world. The skin barrier is composed of lipids and proteins that help keep irritants out of the skin, help protect you from the outside world. The chronic inflammation common to obesity actually disrupts barrier integrity, making the skin a lot more prone to dryness, irritation, and different types of eczemas. Using gentle cleansers, avoiding long hot showers, overly harsh bathing products, and regularly moisturizing your skin, that can really go a long way with helping to address the barrier needs in people with obesity. Let me know in the comments, have you ever heard of something called lymphedema? It's essentially chronic swelling, and in this case, most often of the lower legs, secondary to poor lymphatic drainage. It often affects the legs and is more common in people with obesity, essentially due to the pressure that is being put on the lymphatic system. Not only did the legs become swollen, but over time, this swelling creates a lot of inflammation and can cause the skin to harden and also to break down and be vulnerable to a variety of infections, such as cellulitis, a deep bacterial infection of the skin. And lymphedema can end up making it more difficult to be active, to be mobile. Ultimately, that is not going to help out the obesity. Lymphedema is managed with compression therapy, weight management, and gentle skincare. Then you have something called lipodermatosclerosis. Lipodermatosclerosis is a condition involving inflammation and fibrosis of the skin of the lower legs. It's linked to something called chronic venous insufficiency. Basically the valves in your veins get a little kaput, so the blood cannot drain back up to the heart properly. It collects there. It's known as venous insufficiency. You get leakage of a lot of inflammation in the skin that can lead to this woody induration as it's described. It's often mistaken for skin discoloration, but it's very serious and can lead to skin ulcers, skin infections, permanent skin changes. Lipodermatosclerosis is actually very challenging to treat and to correct. It involves weight reduction, compression stockings, and sometimes medications to improve circulation. Did you know that obesity can impact your collagen? That is another way in which it affects your skin. Obesity doesn't just impact the outermost layer of your skin, it goes deep, altering dermal collagen. This makes you vulnerable to the formation of stretch marks, thinner skin, decreased skin elasticity, increased bruising. And while some of this is cosmetic, it also means that the skin is a lot less resilient to pressure, to skin injury, and to surgeries that you might need. Speaking of surgeries, another negative effect of obesity on the skin is impaired wound healing. Obesity slows down the healing process. This is due to reduced oxygen delivery, poor circulation, and increased inflammation. And all of these things raise the risk for chronic ulcers, infections, and complications 
complications after surgery. Proper wound care, blood sugar control, and early interventions are key. What can you do if you're experiencing these skin issues? First, keep the skin clean and dry, especially in the skin folds. Use barrier creams and powders to reduce chafing and moisture buildup. Apply moisturizers with ceramides and urea to keep the skin healthy and support the needs of the skin barrier. I will link some down below in the description box that I recommend. Stick to loose, breathable clothing that wicks away moisture from the skin. And importantly, pay attention to your skin. If you notice sores, areas of skin breakdown, rashes in the skin folds, Seek medical attention as soon as possible. The earlier these things are addressed with expert medical intervention, the better off you will be in the long run. Also, when it comes to helping to alleviate the impact of obesity on the skin and total body health, weight management is a cornerstone. Managing your weight through lifestyle interventions doesn't just benefit your internal organs, it benefits your skin as well, which is an organ. So in summary, obesity can impact the skin in a variety of ways. Some of them are visible to your eye, some are more serious and worth paying attention to. From skin tags to rashes to problems with wound healing and circulation, your skin, it is a reflection of what is going on inside your body. I really hope you guys found this video helpful. Now on the end slate, I'm going to link my video all about how insulin resistance impacts your skin. You definitely wanna check that one out next as it relates to much of what we talked about in today's video. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.